Hey guys, so Papillon Effect on the RPG Maker Web forums um, asked me to basically get back to basics and make a tutorial for you guys on how I actually export my images into RPG Maker. And I made this tutorial already and the the editing software crashed and I lost the video, so I have to do it again, which is super fun. So um, I already showed you guys in a previous video that I... Um, always have two layers. So I have top and bottom. Um, and I'll show you guys what's in this layer, sorry, what's in these layers. And we'll kind of touch on where your stuff should be. So in the bottom, we have base, we have grass, foliage, stones, basically anything the character can collide with or walk on top of. So you see, super easy. Um, the only layer that's going to be a little bit weird for you guys is cast shadows. So cast shadows are these ones, they're the ones that are um, basically shadows that the character can walk on top of that won't like cover them because obviously the rocks are not as tall as my character. So that's bottom. Now top, if we close bottom, you'll see is a bunch of different things. So we have lots of shadows. We have the, the parts of the trees that the character can walk behind and we have these cliffs. Um, so if I open this up, you'll see that it's basically anything in the grid that the character can walk behind. So the character can walk behind here. The character can walk behind here. And the cliffs I have cut out because I basically want the character to be able to kind of walk into them by a tile so that it's not like some weird collision barrier that it actually looks sort of organic um, and that their head peeks out a little bit. So yeah, that's why those are cut out like that. Um, we have cliff shadows, which are all the shadows on my map pretty much. Um, cliff shadows and wall shadows should have been merged, but they weren't. So anyways, that's what they look like. Blam. So wall shadows are all the ones against the wall, and cliff shadows are all the ones against the cliffs. That's over-organization for you. Um, we have tree and rock shadows. Um, these ones were a lower opacity, so they would have been in a separate layer for sure. Um, they were at 30% rather than 40, and those are everything that would be above my player, so my tree shadows. Um, for the object shadows, I have another tutorial for that. Um, it'll be linked at the end of the video, so if you need to figure out how to do that, just check it out. And then we have above shadows and characters. So that's literally one item. It's this tree down here. And um, the only reason I did that was because if it was where it was supposed to be, um, it would be covered by the shadows. So we just keep it out so it stays clean. Um, okay. And then we have our flavor effects at the top. So brightness and contrast, which is like a very slight effect that kind of increases the grayness for me. Mine's at negative 20 contrast, makes just makes it a little bit more like fuzzy. And then human saturation. So I have minus 20 saturation, minus 20 lightness, just to make it a little bit more dead looking. All right, so super, super simple. Um, if you're wondering how you get stuff into your top layer, um, I have I make my folders down here. So there's a folder, I'll call it top. Now let's say I had a tree, for example. Um, let's just copy this tree, I guess. So I'm gonna copy this. Let's pretend my players can walk behind this. So I'm gonna blam, I'm gonna layer via cut. So I'm using my marquee tool layer via cut. Um, it's this whole part of the tree. I'm gonna move this layer up into top. Blam, like so. That's the wrong folder. This is my like fake pretend top folder. See what I mean? But you'll want this below your effects. Sweet. So that's literally how you do it. Super, super easy. Um, just make sure that you're locking with the grid and that it's, you know, it's kosher. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to keep undoing until I get back to not having that extra folder. Get out of here. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to show you how to save it. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> what the heck? Can I delete this group? Okay, I don't know why it wouldn't let me. Okay. So now we're going to export. So when we're exporting, I already have my stuff organized. I'm going to remove top. I'm going to go to export, save for web, save. I'm going to make sure that it's in my pictures folder. So my project, images, and then pictures. Um, I'm going to name it, let's just name it test bottom. And I already have a file named this because remember I did the tutorial earlier. I'm going to just save that and then top. And we're going to do the same thing. So file, export, save for web, save. And it's PNG, obviously. And then bottom, sorry, this is top test. Top test. <laughs> All right. Sweet. So 
now that those are saved into my pictures folder, um, and this is going to be different depending on what plugin you're using. So this is specifically for Galen Maris plugin. Um, if you are using like LTN's plugin, you're going to save it in your layers folder, but that just depends on what you're using. So two plugins for this. We're going to be using Galen Maris by Pictures the Map. So this one's like super, super old school. It's been like around since the dawn of RPG Maker MV. So we're going to use that. And then we're going to use region restrictions from Yanfly. Um, so this just basically lets us set where a player can walk and where they can't. So I'm keeping it simple. I have all allow as region one and all restrict as region two. Um, so basically I have my event up here. I created it earlier. I'll explain to you guys what it looks like. So the plugin calls are all on Galen Maris page if you need them. Um, but basically he uses pictures. So we're going to use show picture number one and you're leaving everything um, as the same as, as, as it comes and it's going to be test bottom and then the plugin call. So Oh, to, sorry, to show a picture, it's um, page number two, show a picture, and then you just add your picture in. Um, the plugin command is on page number three, it's plugin command at the bottom. We're gonna go to edit this one so you can look. So bind picture to map is the plugin call. Number one is the number of the picture, so this is picture number one. And then below characters means that it's the same layer as the tile map. So this is useful if you are cutting out your water um, because you can have the auto tiles basically like underneath your um, parallax map. We have same thing. So show picture number two. This one is test top, same thing. And then we have bind pictures to map number two for the picture and then above characters. So these are exactly as they're shown. It's a parallel process on the map. And then you just put a race event at the bottom for good measure. Um, and basically what's going to happen when I go in here is it's going to show the pictures in my sprite, but I'm not going to be able to move around because I have no possibilities set on my game. So, oh no, what's happening? So anyways, um, what you're going to do for that is go into here, grab your parallax background for this one. So this was this one. And then you're going to be able to see where your player can walk and you're going to go into regions. We put number one as our all allow. And we're just gonna start drawing where our character can walk basically. So they can walk here and here. They can walk along this. They can walk along this and this, blam, blam. Oh, they can't walk on that crystal. So I'll change that in a second. They can, oh God, I'm doing the wrong one. <laughs> Okay, so you just keep doing that until you basically are finished your map. Make sure you're consistent. I don't think I'm being consistent right now, to be honest with you. Oh, no, they can't walk on this, can they? No. And then I'm going to put these a tile in so that my player can walk behind it, and I'll show you what that looks like. They can't walk on that. What am I doing? And then same thing. A tile deep for everything. And then you can go like that. And they can walk on that too. Cool. And I'm just going to fill everything else with my brush tool. And number two. Blam, blam. Okay, now let's go in and see if this looks good. God, that starting music. Okay, so now I have my player can move around. I can walk behind this tree. I can walk behind these cliffs. So you see, like, if if I wasn't to um, cut out those cliffs, I would just be able to go right about here, and it would be a collision. But now I can walk behind these cliffs, and it just looks a little bit more natural that way. It looks good, eh? Blam. Um, and that's that. So that's super, super easy. So region restrictions, they really, really help. Um, and that's like the gist of it. So there is one other thing I wanted to show you guys. So if we look at, which map is it? Holy City. Um, if we look at this map, I'll show you my parallax layer. So it looks like this. And the one thing you'll notice for sure is that my water is cut out. So I went into Photoshop, I deleted all the water before I exported it into here. And because um, my plugin command 
is set to below characters, it's the same as the tile map. So what happens is this. So you'll see that I have my auto tiles over top of where they were filled. So if I delete this, you'll see. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, let me use a brush instead. So you'll see that this is where I cut it out. Blam. Okay, so don't mind all the random stuff happening, but you can see that um, we have water. So having this tile map the same as the parallax layer basically has it so that um, the water shows underneath your tile map, but your player can still walk above it. So it's super, super helpful than using below tile map because um, there's different plugin commands. Just use what I've showed you and you'll keep it simple. Um, and then to get the these plants to show in the water, um, you just got to put those in the top layer so that they're above the um, they're above the auto tile essentially. And that's the same for anything that's above the water, um, which I did show you guys in my previous parallax tutorial, parallax flow. And that should be just about it. If you guys have any other questions, as always, reach out. Um, I probably won't make another tutorial on this because this should be enough. But I mean, yeah, I'm always down to help you guys out. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.